Apple have just hosted WWDC 2022, and these events seem to get bigger and bigger each year with more hardware and more software announcements, which I'm totally up for, but as per usual, I'm always most excited about the new iPad things, and there's a pretty big update today to iPadOS with iPadOS 16, so let's jump right into that first and talk about all the cool new things, and we'll talk about the other stuff too towards the end, so let's just get right into it. Let's start with the most exciting thing, we're finally getting a weather app for the iPad. Hooray! I honestly didn't realise this was such a big request, but everyone on Twitter seemed to absolutely love this. I'm cool with it being there, and it looks like it's going to be a nice big app that uses the full screen, but we're still missing a calculator, so hopefully next year we'll get that. Seriously though, let's talk about Stage Manager on iPad first, because this is the big new feature which allows you to multitask properly with floating windows on iPad. If you swipe up from the bottom right, it looks like you enter into this stage manager mode where you can resize windows, have different workspaces set up, and it looks like you can have up to four floating window apps open at the same time, which is very similar to Mac OS or Windows, and it's so cool to see it in action. I don't think it was implemented in the way a lot of people thought it would be. I thought for one, it would just be floating windows on the standard screen, but this looks like it brings it into its kind of own little space so things don't get too confusing. And I think that's the right way to go about it. So I'm really excited to start using it. When you are in stage manager mode as well, you can just pull in apps from the dock because that pops up too. And you can build your own workspaces, which is really cool. I'm quite excited to see if I can kind of have like a productivity one and then like a gaming one and then some other ones as well for different uses. I think that's gonna be really, really awesome. The next huge thing was getting that full screen support when you connect your iPad to an external monitor. It's finally here after being sorely missed for years and years and it looks like a really good implementation of it. Effectively, when you plug your iPad into your external display, you get a full screen finally, no more bars or anything, and it looks very similar to macOS. You get your dock at the bottom and all that sort of thing. And basically, this lets you have a full screen version of the Stage Manager. So you can use Stage Manager to have all these floating windows windows up on the big screen. And the other thing that's really interesting about this is that the iPad itself stays active. So it's not in some sort of slave mode where it can't be used properly. It just stays as its own thing. So you can keep using the Apple Pencil if you need to on that screen and you can pull stuff from it. So if you're working on something on the Apple Pencil, you can actually just drag that up and put it into the main screen and vice versa, which is really interesting. And I'm so glad they kept that in. Using the Apple Pencil is one of my favorite things on the iPad. So losing that if I connected it to a monitor would feel like a big shame. The only sad thing is it looks like it's limited to iPads with the M1 chip. So that's the newer iPad Airs and the iPad Pros from last year. And I assume most of all the M1 stuff moving forward. I can only imagine it's because it needs kind of that M1 architecture to run that on a full screen mode, but I don't know, that's all conjecture. But if you are looking for that, it looks like you're gonna need an M1 iPad. So if you've got an earlier one, you're gonna have to upgrade or they might even have some form of implementation of it. And I hope they do, but it doesn't look like you'll be getting that full feature suite which is a bit of a shame. Those were like the headline feature updates for iPadOS, which I think most people like myself are really gonna look forward to. I use the iPad a huge amount and getting to use it a little bit more for more productive stuff will be interesting. And I'll make loads of videos and all that sort of stuff too. But Apple also announced some other stuff as well. There was a huge list of little things that's getting like universal undo and redo, customizable toolbars. They also talked about a pretty big update for the Files app, which I know a lot of people have been waiting for, but it looks like a bunch of simple stuff which we've all been wanting, being able to change file types, having navigational buttons and sortable columns and really kind of standard stuff we get in Finder. It looks like it's coming to files and that can only be a good thing. They also made a big reference of desktop class apps as well, but we didn't see Final Cut and we didn't see Logic Pro or anything like that. And I still am in the camp of thinking they're just not gonna come because you've got to want to buy a Mac for a reason. And if you get an iPad and you can get all that on it, then there'd be no reason to buy a Mac. So I think Apple is still guarding those things, but one day I really do hope we can get Final Cut or some sort of version of Final Cut for iPad. And the same with Logic Pro. I bet Logic Pro on an iPad would be awesome. Another thing they announced, which is coming later in the year, is something called Freeform, which is a brand new app from Apple, which affects effectively looks like a giant whiteboard that you can kind of do anything with. So you can write on it, you can put sticky notes on it, you can drag photos and files and all that sort of stuff into it. And the goal with this app is some sort of collaboration thing. So you could probably have three or four different people on this board at the same time, 
all working on something. Now, for a lot of people, you'll probably just skip right over this, but if you work in a creative industry or something like that, it could be really useful. For me personally, I can see us using this for our store Kuroku, because we often have a bunch of different notes files all kicking about that are shared. But if we can use this instead, I think it can be really, really awesome. Apple also talked about a new feature called collaboration, which is if you've ever used Google Docs and you've ever collaborated with anybody on that or shared a document, it looks like that, but for Apple's apps. So if you're in pages, you can share it to a group of friends on iMessage, and then you can all collaborate on the same thing together. This looks really awesome if you are in Apple's ecosystem. So if you work in pages or numbers or Keynote or anything like that, then you can share all these things and work collaboratively on a project together, which is really awesome. This also extends to Safari, so you can all browse Safari at the same time and you can see who's looking at what and you can all bring together ideas like that. Seems like a great thing for remote work, uh, even though it kind of looks a little chaotic to me, but it's cool, I'm glad it's here and hopefully it will come to other apps too. If it just gets stuck with Apple's ecosystem, then that's fine, but it'd be a shame to not see this across the board on kind of iPad specific apps like Procreate or something like that. The last kind of big exciting thing for someone like me who edits a lot of video is you can now use the iPad to reference color. This won't be hugely useful for you if you don't edit video, but if you edit a lot of video like I do, then you can effectively use your iPad to check the color of all of your stuff going in and out. This would be especially good for the M1 Pro with the Pro XDR display built in, and it'll be good for the other ones too, but it's a cool feature, and if you edit in Final Cut, then it might be a really, really useful thing to just have sitting on Sidecar. There was a bunch of other changes as well, which came with iOS 16, which iPad OS 16 just gets by default. There were some cool lock screen changes and there were some cool updates to messages. So you can kind of like unsend things and delete messages you didn't mean to send and things like that, which is really nice to have as well. It just means the iPad is gonna be that much better again. Overall, it's some really cool updates to iPadOS. I don't think it was everything I hoped it was gonna be. I, my expectations were quite low. So when they brought out the multitasking thing, I was excited for it because honestly, the longer it went on for, the more I thought they're probably not gonna mention iPad too much, but they did and that's awesome. Some great updates here, a really decent step forward for the iPad and I'm excited to get used to all the new features. Obviously there's more than just the iPad stuff. Let's talk about the M2 and the new MacBook Airs, which look absolutely fantastic. I think the design update here is absolutely gorgeous. We still do get the notch, which is a bit of a shame because I know that's really divisive, but I think the product as a whole echoes the M1 Pro and the MacBook Pros from last year and all those sorts of things, and they look great. But the big one here is the M2 chip. This is the update from the M1, which is kind of long in the tooth now. It's about two years old, so getting the M2 update here is awesome. It's a similar vibe to last year. It's an eight core processor, and which is four efficiency cores and four power cores. And the GPU's been bumped up ever so slightly to 10 cores, which is pretty awesome. There's a load of other stuff in there too, which is gonna make it really good for video editing and it's gonna make it really power efficient, which is the big push. Apple always seems to have a big push on power efficiency. And I think in a laptop, that's kind of like a really smart move. Having incredible battery life like the M1 did last time is gonna be even better in the M2. And that's something to look forward to. They also updated the MacBook Pro 13 of the M2, but they didn't change the design at all. So that's the same design from 2016 all the way up till now. And it's still got the touch bar and all of that. It kind of looked a little sad to see that. It's a, it's a shame they didn't update that design, but I get why they didn't. It's an entry level MacBook Pro with a powerful M2 chip. That thing's still gonna absolutely rip and you wouldn't go wrong buying it at all. Also that new M2 chip comes with Mac OS Ventura, which is a new update for Mac OS, which will come out very soon. And one of the bigger disappointments I think was there's no Mac Pro, or at least not yet. There wasn't even a mention of it. And I thought maybe this would be the time that they would, but they didn't. That's fine, hopefully we'll see it soon. So that just about wraps up everything I found interesting in this WWDC. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I always like to know what you find the most interesting at these sorts of announcements. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you are because I'm planning on making kind of a bigger video about what iPad OS 16 means for the future of iPad and where I see it going and all that sort of thing. And that'll be an interesting video to make. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next one.